Hey everyone, welcome back. Second part of the question. In the first part of the question, we solved for the uh, the moment and the shear force at C, and we found the reactions of the beam. Now we are asked to, if you remember the second part of that question, to draw the bending moment and the shear force diagrams for the beam. So let's uh, let's get started now. In this part of the, I know that we had two parts of this course. We had uh, first semester, second year, we had strengths of materials one. Second semester, we had strengths of materials two. In the first part of the course, they asked us to solve the bending moment diagram using the equation method, where we cut the beam in different segments and we find equations. Um, and then in the second part, we they showed us the shortcut way to do it. Okay, so we made a video already showing you how to uh, use that shortcut method to find the bending moment and shear force diagrams. In this one, we're going to show you how to use the equations because we're doing midterm preparation for the first part of this course right now. So, yeah, that's uh, if you want to check out the other method, just check out that other video. We'll put a link in the video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first step is to we found the reactions before, right? So I'll just draw them in here. So this is 2,000 kilonewton, and this is also 2,000 kilonewton, right up. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the beam uh, between A and B. So for every different segment, or for every like external force acting, or every support, okay, we're gonna cut, make a cut. So we're gonna make a cut here, okay, and then we're gonna make a cut in this section, okay, because they're two different loading conditions, and the same equation won't work for both. So let's start from. We're going to do section one, we'll call it, okay, from zero, we'll, set, we'll call this section one, okay? So from zero, so zero is greater than or equal to x, okay, which is uh, less than four, okay? All right, we're going to, and I like to draw a little diagram here like this, okay? So we're going, that's the beam, and we've taken the beam, for example, we've cut it here, some variable distance from the origin. So this is our origin where we're starting. Okay, so this is point O, and we have this uh, this force here now, okay? But now, because the distance is variable, right? We're trying to get it in terms of x. This distance is now x, it's no longer four. And this uh, distributed load here, this 200 kilonewton per meter, okay? Okay, that is going to be, remember when we multiplied 200 by the, uh, the, the length here, right? To get, to resolve the force. Now we don't have the length, we have x, okay? So we're just gonna multiply 200 by x, and this is what we're going to call this 200x, okay? And we don't have any other forces because we're not at A, right? So that's the only external force acting. We have the internal forces of shear and of moment here, like I uh, discussed in the other question because we cut it at that point. So just below, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the equations so that we can draw the shear and bending moment diagram. So we have, uh, let's do the forces in Y first. Okay, so we have the forces in Y, we're up as positive. Okay, we have negative shear, as our sign convention indicates here, and we have negative 200X, right? Okay, so uh, that's, that's all we have, that's equal to zero, so V is equal to negative 200X. Excellent. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the next part of the question. And the next part is to find the equation for the bending moment where counterclockwise is positive. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's uh, the same as the other question. Okay, we're just doing it from this section now. So we have our section. Let's take a look at that. So we know that this distance, because the distributed load acts in the center of x, this distance from here to here is going to be x over 2. So if we know that's x over 2, and this uh, force acting downwards is 200x, okay, so if we're taking the moment about the cut section, okay, we're going to have the moment which is acting in the counterclockwise direction, which is positive, and we have this 200x force that's also acting in the positive direction, and it is multiplied by x over 2. So we're going to multiply 200x times x over 2, which is the distance to that force. That's equal to 0. And we should get that m is equal to negative, and if we just calculate that there, we get 100x squared kilonewton, and that's kilonewton meters. Okay, so what we've done now is we've, uh, we've created the two formulas uh, that we needed to draw the first section of the bending moment diagram, but we're not done yet because we don't have the equations for the centerpiece. So we'll call this section two, okay? Now, what we need to do here, okay, and this is from, Four less than or equal to x, which is or great x is greater than or equal to four, but it's less than eight right, on the beam. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to also include these equations in this section, right? Because this what happens here influences what happens here. Okay, if we're taking our origin as zero from here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and draw the beam here. Okay, so we have, okay, so we're going to say that this is point A, okay? So this is point A. We're cutting the beam here. Once again, we have our shear and our moment. Okay, so at point A, okay, we still have, we have the, uh, the 200, 2000, sorry, kilonewton reaction. Okay, we have, now, since we're not considering this section, okay, this is no longer variable distance, okay? So this is point O, right? So we know that this distance is four meters. So only the section that we're evaluating is a variable distance, okay? This section now becomes four meters, okay? So when we resolve this force, it is now 800. Okay, don't make that mistake on the test. Don't leave this as 200x, because that would be wrong. Okay, so this is 800 kilonewton now. All right, and now we have this force here. Okay, this is some distance here. This entire distance is x, okay? And this distance is x minus four. Perfect. So, and we need to resolve this force here. Okay, so this is 800, sorry, 300, okay, and x minus 4. Okay, so that's the, and this distance here would be x minus 4 over 2. Okay, perfect. So, uh, what do we do now? Same thing, we're just going to take the forces in y. Forces in y are negative v, right? We have negative 300 x minus 4. Okay, we have a 2000 kilonewton force up. And we have a negative 800 kilonewton force. Okay, and if we go ahead and calculate V, okay, and we should get V is equal to negative 300 uh, times X minus 4 plus 1200. And if we go ahead and we just try plugging in, for example, at uh, point C, okay, so point C is 8 meters from the origin. So if we do 300, okay, 300 times 4 plus 1200, we'll get that the shear is zero, which is what we got in the other question. So we know that it's, this equation is correct. So let's go ahead and write the equation for the moment. So this is a little trickier, this one. I left myself a little more space here. All right, so we need to write the equation for the moment, okay? So once again, we have this moment, free moment here that's positive. We have this 300 times x minus four force. That's acting in the center of this x minus four segment, right? So we have, that's a positive direction, right? We have 300 x minus 4, and that's going to be multiplied by x minus 4 divided by 2, okay? Perfect. We have a 2,000 kilonewton force, okay? That's negative, that's acting x minus 4 from this point here, and we have this 800 kilonewton force. Okay, so this is, uh, this, di this distance here is 2 meters, right? This one here? That's a two meter distance, and we have an x minus four distance. So if we add those together, we should get the total distance, right? So it's just gonna be x minus four plus two, so that should be x minus two, the distance from 800 to this area here, and that is in the positive direction. Okay, so we have x minus four, okay, and then plus two meters here, which is this. Okay, and if we go ahead and we write that out, okay, we move m to the other side, we should get that m is equal to, we'll just simplify this a little bit. Don't simplify this too much. You don't have to expand it or anything. You can just plug the numbers in. That's fine. So m goes to the other side. We have uh, 300 divided by 2. We have 150 x minus 4 squared, right? x minus 4, x minus 4. We have plus 2,000 x minus 4. We have minus 800 x minus 2. So that's what m is equal to. So we've just gone ahead and we've written the equation for the center section of the beam. Okay, and now all we have to do is draw the shear and bending moment diagram, okay? So let's go ahead and let's immediately start. All right, we have uh, from sections from 0 to 4 meters, we are going to follow these two equations, and then when we're drawing the center piece, we're going to use these two equations. So let's go ahead and do the shear. We have uh, V equals negative 200 X. Okay, so we're going to plug in the, the start point and the end point, and then we're just going to draw a line because we know this is a linear function. Okay, so when X is 0 right here, right, V is 0, so that's our starting point. I'll just use red. And when... Uh, when x is equal to 4 meters on the beam. If we plug x into 4, we are going to get negative 800. So that's negative 800 there. Let's go ahead and we'll draw that in. Perfect. So uh, what do we do now? Well, we go ahead and we draw the moment for this section too. Okay, so we have our starting point, right? And that is going to be 
zero, right? Because we plug in x equals zero. What about four? Well, we just plug in four, so we have four squared times negative 100, and that's gonna give us negative 1600, okay? So negative 1600. Great, and because it is a, a negative moment, but it's increasing, okay, we are going to use this concavity here. Perfect. So we go ahead and plug in four for x. This term will cancel and we're left with shear is equal to 1200 at point A, right? Which is four meters. Okay, so that's gonna come all the way up here. And for the moment, okay, if we go ahead and plug in four here, we uh, this term will cancel, this term will cancel, and we're only left with negative 800 times two which is negative 1600, so that's not gonna change, okay? So let's go ahead and let's uh, plug in our point C into both equations, okay? So point C is going to be eight, right? If we plug in eight here, we're gonna have negative 300 times four plus 1200, that's gonna be equal to zero. So at point C, we can go ahead and draw a straight line here, okay, for the shear, and that is, uh, it's acting downwards, okay? This, uh, this slope is negative here, right? So let's go ahead and plug in uh, x equals eight for, because at point C, we're at eight meters from the origin here. Let's plug it in for x in the moment and see what we get. So we should get that uh, we have 800, okay? So that's going to be uh, 800, positive 800 moment there. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and we're going to draw, connect those like that, okay? So at this point, we know that it's a symmetrical beam, like we said, this is a trick that your professors will definitely give you. Okay, so now we can just continue the, drawing the other half of the bending moment diagram exactly the same way, okay? But in the opposite direction. So it's kind of like uh, you've taken the diagram and you've gone ahead and flipped it, okay? So and the moment is going to be symmetrical here. And that's pretty much it, okay? So we have an 800 max uh, or moment here where shear is equal to zero. And as, as, uh, as always, your moments uh, and your shear need to go back to zero. If they don't, then you've done something wrong. Okay, so perfect. Let's, uh, let's just take a look at what we got here. Cool, so uh, we'll, we're done now. You know, we've, uh, we've drawn our shear and bending moment diagrams. And just one more thing to note, okay, is that as you can see, all right, when the shear is equal to zero, as, and we have three points of zero shear here, those are going to be our maximum moments, okay? So as you can see, the, the kind of the moment diagram peaks at the point where the shear uh, goes through the zero x-axis here, okay? And same thing here and same thing here. So that's just something to keep in mind so that you, uh, you know kind of while you're drawing it where those peaks on the moment diagram should be. Okay, cool, so thanks for watching. I know that was a little bit of a long video, but hopefully that gives you um, a, a couple tricks with symmetrical beams and shows you how to draw both the diagrams. Thanks for watching.